Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Thomas of Woodstock and we get to hear from Le Poul today in Act 5, Scene 1. Le Poul is the governor of Calais and he is the one to whom they shipped Thomas of Woodstock to once King Richard and the Flatterers had kidnapped him. Remember, they kidnapped him, put him in a mask costume, and then put him on a boat and shipped him off to Calais. And Le Poul has been given orders that he is supposed to take care of Woodstock once he gets to Calais, because then this way Woodstock can be out of King Richard's way, but King Richard's hands will be clean in the whole matter. Like, you, nobody will be able to tie Woodstock's death to King Richard. But in the interim, Queen Anne died, and Richard is taking it very badly. He got some comfort from the Duchess of Gloucester, who is Woodstock's wife, and almost spilled the beans to her that he was responsible for kidnapping Thomas and shipping him off to France. But the flatterers were like, no, 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 we gotta keep him quiet, we gotta keep him quiet. And at the end of Act 4, Scene 3, Richard admitted that he couldn't even really remember why he was mad at Woodstock to begin with. And he wants to bring him back and he wants to cancel the hit on his life uh, before it's too late because he thinks that it would be much better to have Woodstock back. And he, he sort of wants to make amends about these sorts of things because he's very, very deeply wounded by the loss of Queen Anne. So Act 5, Scene 1, we are in Calais with Le Poul and two murderers. And he says to them, like, okay, Woodstock is sleeping right over there. Do you have everything you need? Do you have your tools? And the murderers are like, yeah, we have, we have this towel that we can strangle him with. But of course, then if he struggles, I have this hammer that I can hit him with, and then I can slit his throat. And the pool's like, no, 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 no. This has to look natural. This has to look like a natural death. Like, you can't really mess up the body like that. So they're like, okay, well, then I guess we have to smother him. And he's like, okay, I guess that works. And he's like, but you don't, do you, do you feel at all weird about killing him? I mean, look, he's he looks so innocent and like he had a reputation for being a really nice guy like do you feel at all bad about this and the murderers are like nope it's a paycheck and he's like okay well then um i guess go in there and i'll give you a signal when it's a good time to to come and take care of him and they're like yep we we will take care of everything just you know give us a nod in the other room when you want us to come running and we will come running and the pool says do so. And then the murderers leave, so it's just the pool by himself. And yet, by all my fairest hopes, I swear, the boldness of these villains to this murder makes me abhor them and the deed forever. Horror of conscience with the king's command fights a fell combat in my fearful breast. The king commands his uncle here must die, and my sad conscience bids the contrary, and tells me that his innocent blood thus spilt, heaven will revenge, murders a heinous guilt, a seven times crying sin, a cursed man. The further that I wade in this foul act, my troubled senses are the more distract, confounded and tormented past my reason. But there's no lingering. Either he must die, or great King Richard vows my tragedy. Then twixt two evils, tis good to choose the least. Let danger fright faint fools. I'll save mine own and let him fall to black destruction. He sleeps upon his bed. The time serves fitly. I'll call the murderers in. Sound music there to rock his senses in eternal slumbers. Sleep, Woodstock, sleep. Thou never more shalt wake. This town of Calais shall forever tell within her castle walls Plain Thomas fell. So Le Poul doesn't want to have to kill Woodstock. He thinks that this is a bad idea. Um, he's a little bit afraid of the murderers and how fine they are with 
with committing murder, but he's also like, I feel really bad about this, but King Richard says I have to do this. So he's got this fight going on within himself. He's supposed to do this thing, but he really doesn't want to do this thing. And he's sure that if Woodstock is killed here and now in this castle, the furies are going to descend upon him and get revenge for for murdering essentially this innocent man. But he's like, you know, ultimately it comes down to I do this or King Richard will kill me. So I got to choose the lesser of two evils and I have to let them kill him, even though I don't want that to happen. And this is like, this isn't going to be good. So he, he asks some musicians to play some light music, which they do, just to sort of mask any other sounds that might wake up Woodstock. And he says that he's going to call for the murderers. He's going to go get the murderers. Um, and he, he says, you know, my, my castle, this castle, this town of Calais is forever going to be known as the place where Thomas of Woodstock was killed. Um, and it's interesting, a couple bits about this monologue strike me as interesting. There's a couple little rhyming couplets in there, which would be fun to play with if you're performing this as an actual piece. Like, what is he thinking about in those specific reasons? Um, his uncle must die, but it's the contrary. Blood thus spilt is a heinous guilt things like that, this foul act, my senses are distract. Like, why are those specific bits rhyming? What's going on in his head as he's thinking through all of those bits? But also there's a lot of alliteration of words that start with the letter F. And I'm sure that you can think of another word that starts with the letter F that might be running frantically through his brain as he's trying to decide whether or not it's the right thing to do to kill this innocent man that is sleeping just in the next room. So another fun thing that you could maybe play with if you ever get to perform this piece somewhere. So anyway, he leaves and then enters a ghost to give us a monologue. We'll see who it is and we'll hear more from him. I'll tell you, it's definitely a him. Like there's, there's so few female characters in this. We will get to hear from a ghost for tomorrow's monologue. So I'll see you then. Mwah.